yeah, my company. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our next speaker is Mark Maudley. He'll be asking questions regarding injections. All right, everybody. I hope that we are not that tired, so we could pay a little attention today as well at the end of the day. So, injections. Uh, I believe that we've heard quite a lot of injections in the past two years, I would say. I guess I read more articles in the two years uh, than ever before about injections. But today, we should not really talk about these kind of injections and have a little bit of, of talk about the OVAS category injection. So, my name is Mark Moodley. I really love to teach. And before the actual presentation, they told me that a good presentation has got three key ingredients. One of them, that it is short. The other one, it is not really long. And the third one, that it ends soon. So I'm going to start uh, by saying that, or promising that, that I'm going to shorten uh, my presentation in order to fit the time frame that we've got over here. So uh, I do not really like to talk about myself in these kind of situations. The people who met me uh, during lunch break, they know that I'm quite talkative. So after the, uh, the little presentation, feel free to reach out. We could have a little talk. And after midnight, we can leave as well. So uh, besides us, uh, besides pun intended, uh, there is another company, or I would say organization, which is quite fond of injections. And this logo should help us out as well. So uh, what is this organization? Uh, this is called the OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project. And they have quite a few projects, I would say, which I really adore. And one of those is the OWASP Top 10. I really like the Thread Dragon, which is a thread modeling tool provided by OWASP completely free, and the Z-Attack proxy called ZAP as well. But I really like this project because it sums up the most recent vulnerabilities, I would say. Uh, and therefore, it is always a good point to have a picture about the current stance of the IT security or the web world, I would say. So, in the most recent OVAS Top 10 uh, release, it was actually last year, in 2021, uh, we've got a completely new uh, topic, which is called injection. Nobody ever heard about it, right? No, that's right. Who said no? May the dog be with you, please. <laughs> Give it to him. So, uh, it wasn't introduced last year, but it was introduced the year before, right? Where, is, where was the other no coming from? All right, I've got a few of them, so <laughs> be prepared. All right, so it wasn't introduced in 2017. What year was it introduced? Uh, no, we are getting closer and closer, but it still wasn't uh, introduced in this year. And I believe it wasn't introduced in this year as well. But in the meantime, you've got your duck as well. So let's see. Uh, was it introduced this year? We are getting tougher and tougher. And the answer to that is still freaking no. So basically, the injection uh, was introduced in 2003. Is there anybody in the audience who was born after this date? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so as you can see, if a vulnerability is freaking older than some of the audience, there is something clearly going on, right? Yeah, I, I heard it right. So. Uh, we could talk about a lot of kinds of injections, and uh, I brought here a few, but to be more current, today we had pretty amazing, uh, actually quite amazing uh, talks, and two of them stood out for me uh, because of the mentions of injections. 
One of those was with our ARP injection, so basically route injection, and that's quite amazing that we talked about, and it is still not on the slide. The other topic that we've had was the first GitHub issues. Do we remember what the issue was with the GitHub, I guess, pipeline or, or runners? What injection was there? It was a command injection. All right. So uh, we've got quite a lot of injections around us. What the hell is on the screen? Is there anybody who could tell me? Go ahead. It is actually a tree injection, or it is called a trunk injection in some times. So is there anybody who's got closer to the definition what injection is at freaking all? I'm not surprised by the lack of hands over, <laughs> over there in the audience. Uh, so what on earth are injections at all? So basically we start to say everything is an injection, right? I believe that we do not really have any clear-cut definition on injection itself. So I've came up, or actually uh, with the team, we've came up uh, with two, those two definitions which could shed some light on what we call injections, like data escaping to the contour, control flow. That's something that we would say that's right. Basically, if we are talking about, for example, GPQL, Java Persistence Query Language Injections, that's mostly true. As well, we could talk about unexpected input uh, content uh, with side effects on the application or inside the application itself. I'm quite all right with these definitions. The OWASP uh, Foundation uh, uses kind of a different um, explanation uh, to this topic, which is injection occurs when untrusted data is sent to an interpreter as part of an, a command or a query. Well, I honestly do not really like, like this definition uh, because sometimes there are no actual parser that's involved in that. As we've seen today in the ARP uh, poisoning or the R route injection. There is no actual processing there which is, I would say, different or would be different if we sanitize that data. That is completely changed. So uh, let's agree that I do not really want to define injection itself, but just let's, uh, let's agree that it has to do uh, something at least uh, with the unexpectedness of the input that we are working on. Or, yeah, it has at least side effects. So, OWASP. Uh, OWASP is merging topics into injection. In the most recent change, if you uh, take a look at that, I know that it is blurry, uh, but uh, if you are familiar with the OWASP topics that, you, that now you should know that basically cross-site scripting got merged into injection as well. For me, that's, ki that's kind of a strange uh, behavior or decision. And let me tell you a little story. In 2002, I believe, uh, I, I created a content management system because their PHP was all the rage and Web2 was something that everyone was like quite looking into and uh, we were taking a look at that, wow, this new web thing is shiny and everything. I know I'm old as hell and I was running with the dinosaurs at one point. I can see from the eyes of the audience. But yeah, basically uh, that point we were creating the web and we were quite fond of that uh, stuff. Uh, one day, my created content management system was hacked by none else but my uh, close friend. And he told me that he's done that uh, in a way that he was able to embed JavaScript in one of the uh, codes that he was allowed to written because it was so sophisticated that the, it had different privilege levels, uh, administrators, administrators and content creators. And, uh, 
he was able to stall the contents of my cookies. And I was like, all right. Back then, there was no CSP and uh, HTTP only cookies. Such fancy things didn't really exist then. And basically, uh, we wouldn't even uh, mention that uh, cross-site resource sharing, pff, who heard about those things back then? Basically, those were non-existent. And uh, for me, this is the point where I start to believe that injection is way broader than it should be. So in 2003, the very first OWASP, the very first OWASP top 10 uh, mentioned the command injection flow. The next year, in 2004, it got renamed the category post posthumously uh, to injection flows because they broadened it in that year as well. So in 2021, uh, it got just the category of injection and you could believe anything that's uh, what's in there. Your application needs to be checked against the OWASP top 10 issues because sometimes that's the criteria, which is dumb in itself, not to mention that. But uh, injection contains now almost everything that you could imagine. We've heard today at least three or four topics that were considering, uh, that could be considered as injection, I would say. So I've developed software quite a lot in my life. And uh, what OWASP is doing right now is similar <laughs> uh, when you've got a project manager who is unable to say no uh, to new feature requests. And basically, like a snowball, uh, injection is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We do not even know right now what injection consists of. On, on the slide, we've seen like, I don't know, 10, 20 or something like that uh, of injections. And we still haven't written everything over there. There are quite a lot of things. So this got me thinking, what else could be considered as an injection which was on the overstop 10 list quite uh, uh, recently? And I would argue that what you can do, you can consider uh, XML external entity attacks as injections as well. But of course, we need to rename that topic into DTD injection because uh, you are injecting uh, document type definitions into that. That's a point to that. I would not really uh, merge this topic into injection as well, but yeah, you could do so. Have we ever heard about request smuggling? Nice, a few hands up. All right, would we rename request smuggling into packet injection or something like that? Not that freaking all, right? I think this tendency really has to stop uh, because OWASP is just overpopulating, I would say, the injection space. And I do not really like that. So quite a while ago, I was working uh, with <laughs> a telco company and uh, they had different vendors to choose from. And how do you choose a vendor in IT security? Sometimes, uh, if you are constricted, really, you do not have the choice to choose because the space is so limited at the moment that basically, if you uh, get a paper that says uh, that you've done the OSCP, then you are considered an expert and every word of yours is truth, no matter what. Do not blame me, uh, it is still a good certification and some certifications are pretty good. But uh, just because you've got a certification, it does not matter uh, in terms of real life work because sometimes you do not even know uh, what you should be looking for. And in this vendor selection process, we've created fake sites and it wasn't for the taco company, it was a previous project. Uh, we created fake sites and basically we ordered penetration tests for the, from the vendors. And we told them that, all right, bring us everything from that site which is missing, which is problematic. And uh, sadly, but surely, uh, we haven't got everything back. back. 
that's expectable. It was a 10 day time frame and we hid so many bugs in there, even the creators, we did not know how many were there. Uh, but there were some intentionally hidden uh, features which were not really recovered then. So I'm gonna take just a few minutes uh, from your time and share you really just a few uh, not so common injections. So, uh, anybody? Does we recognize, do we recognize what this is for? Or what payloads are these? Have you got the doc? Now you do. All right, so, uh, it's template injections what we uh, have here. Uh, better to be said, it is server-side template injection because uh, it is better to execute code or do anything on the server side because that's where the key, that's where the data is and that's where the real value hides. So, how do we do the server side template injection uh, with the abbreviation of SSTI? So, first of all, uh, we just send uh, an input which should be rendered uh, on any page or in PDF documents, for example. I really love when sites have uh, PDF exports because most of them is using the free marker uh, template engine. And therefore, if you are uh, looking up uh, the free marker template engine codes or exploits, there is quite a bunch of them and you are able to execute system commands in there, which is quite a win, I would say. So, then just invoke the requested resource and when the template is injected, basically in most of the cases uh, we've got code execution, but uh, what we always have, we are able to exfiltrate data from the server itself. So, uh, yeah, I would say that's something that needs to be considered on and if you are working as a penetration tester or uh, do you do bug bounties or even have uh, some experience in like capture the flag CTF games, I would advise uh, looking on those. I believe that the lead boys are here, aren't they? All right. So uh, please do your CTF chores and start your CTF team. Uh, basic, as far as I know, the Hungarian CTF teams are quite behind in the words order, if I could say so, and uh, we need to work those up. Uh, those are rocky numbers, we need to pump that up. So, uh, what is our next injection topic uh, that I would like to talk about only just a little bit because it is not really something that most of the web penetration testers would be in interested in. So. Uh, have we ever heard about DLL injections? I should have uh, gotten more ducks. Honestly, this is my last lonely duck, so uh, be prepared for her. So, um, we heard about DLL injections before. So, uh, DLL injections is uh, more likely uh, a tool for malware uh, word and in, or privilege escalation word what you've used for and not like the web applications. So uh, what you do is you get the handler of a process and basically modify the memory of the process. I'm not really getting into the details of it. You are modifying the memory of the process and later on uh, you are basically able to take over from that process or create, fork a new uh, process from there where uh, you could work with the uh, rights of the original process, meaning that it is a tool uh, which could be used uh, for um, privilege, privilege escalation purposes. Sorry, it is getting long for me as well. So, I just want to say that reflective loading is another topic. If you are into DLL injections, it is uh, getting cle more clever and clever because we need to avoid antiviruses and stuff. Uh, so we do not really write on the disk and therefore uh, we could fly under the radar uh, for a little bit. Uh, in the talk description that I gave, uh, there is one question. Why do people dismiss the category of injection or injection as a topic. Any guesses? Too 
I believe they do not dismiss it at all. Have you got a doc? Oh, then someone is still obl obligated to have a doc in the, uh, at the end of the talk. So, people do not really dismiss the injection as a topic. It just got so bright and basically there are a few hundred, I would say, uh, that if we uh, came together with MX injections and log injections and cookie injections and stuff, that it is impossible to handle it as a single entity. Uh, let me share you one story. Uh, so, a friend of mine uh, wrote, oh my God, that was in the early days. So, even before some of the audience was born, uh, we had the browser engine Conqueror. Do we remember that? It's, it's not a fresh one, I would say. Uh, you, you have, so basically one of my friends modified uh, the browser engine and with each HTTP request he created or sent a cookie to the server which contained nothing else than admin equals one. So it's laughable. It is so dumb to do. Really, it, it is so dumb but the results were out of this world. Honestly, I haven't seen so many pages broken into by one admin equal, or sorry, a cookie by admin equals one. And uh, the fun thing that he created, uh, I, I told him that I'm going to give this talk and I really like this example. And he told me that just for fun service, he basically created an extension to Chrome as well, uh, which does the same exact thing. Uh, and uh, he told me that <laughs> he was able to get, it was last week or some, uh, some around that, uh, he was able to get an administration panel without logging into the system uh, of a Hungarian web shop. I do not recommend to get around and test our Hungarian web shops uh, with this technique, but well, yeah, uh, we are here uh, with injection topics. So you could get administrator rights on web shops basically with, with a joke like this. So uh, we learned that actually we are really, really behind in terms of understanding injection. We do not really have a, a commonly acceptable, I would say, definition for it and uh, right now I think the key takeaway is that we should not generalize uh, the topics to the point of obfuscation. Is there any question I should answer? If there is none, I just hope that this talk will end the generalization of injection uh, topics in the OWASP top 10, and so there will be no sequel to it. Mark, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, who's the youngest member of the audience? Yeah, the other extreme is also nice. <laughs> so, if you've got any question or just want to hear some fun stories about injection, feel free to uh, reach me out. Uh, I'm still at the conference. And enjoy the rest of it. There is one talk left as far as I know.